Hey there, adventure seekers. Thank you so much for tuning in to uh, my channel in this video. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and uh, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know whenever we put out more content. And as always, give us a thumbs up, share this video if it was helpful and you know somebody else who might benefit from it. So today we're going to continue our smart RV and honestly smart home to series. And we're gonna install Home Assistant the exact same way we installed OpenWRT. We're gonna come back over here to the Proxmox VE helper scripts site home assistant right you know right after the proxmox e tools now you have a lot of different choices here home assistant os virtual machine the pymox home assistant os virtual machine if you're using a raspberry pi with proxmox i wish you luck at proxmox takes a lot of resources i wouldn't recommend doing it you have these home assistant containers podman's home assistant container I recommend using the virtual machine, the Home Assistant OS, because that gives you the most control and most flexibility with a Home Assistant. So we're going to go and click on that. You see what your directions are, and we're just going to click on Copy. And then we're going to come back over to our Proxmox instance. We're going to go to click on Proxmox. We're going to click on Shell, and we're going to paste that command in and hit Enter. And again, this is the same process as before with the OpenWRT. This is gonna create a new instance. I'm gonna click on yes. Do you wanna use default settings? Like I said, I'm just gonna always click on advance. Okay, this gives me the option to pick what version I want. I get a stable version, a beta version, or a development version. The beta is an almost ready for prime time version. The development, there could be lots of bugs in it. So we're gonna stick with stable. So we're gonna hit tab, K, okay. Our virtual machine ID, uh, 115, that's fine. We'll leave it there. Now, on the machine type, that just depends on what machine um, you have. Now, I have uh, the i440FX. If you're not sure what that is, you can Google it. I don't really want to go into the details of that right now. Um, the default is usually okay. Disk catch, do you want none or do you want write through default? We'll stick with the default. Host name, HAOS 12.0 is the default. CPU model, host default, we're going, yep. CPU cores, yeah, definitely want at least two. RAM, that's 4096, that's four gig of RAM. Um, I have 16 gig in total on my machine. That's a good amount of RAM. Our bridge, that's the network we're on. So MAC address, we're gonna leave that blank. Start the VM when completed, yes. Ready to create, yes. Just like before, where do I wanna install it? Do I wanna install it on this storage or that storage? So we wanna stick with that one, hit enter. Now it's downloading the software, as you can see, and it'll install it in a minute. Now this is gonna take a while, even after it gets installed, um, cause it's gonna go out on your network and discover everything that's out there from a home automation perspective. So if you have any like Apple HomeKit, it'll discover that. If you are using um, Roku devices or Alexa devices or Google Home devices, it'll discover those. Any home automation type stuff, pretty much it will discover automatically. And if there's something it doesn't discover automatically, well, it's easy to help it along. And just like that, we're done. What was a couple of seconds for you on this video is probably gonna be a few minutes in real life. So now we're gonna go over and you can see it's already started when I clicked on the console and this is the IP address it gave right up here. Or I can click on do this, home assistant dot local colon eight one two three so let's open up a new tab and go to and as you can see it says preparing home assistant this may take up to 20 minutes show the details it's just running checks for stuff it's looking for stuff in the meantime you can read their vision you can join their community or you can download their app now the app works on ios and android devices but in order to use the app remotely, in other words, off of your um, local network, you're either gonna have to pay a very small um, fee to the Home Assistant crew, or there's other ways you can do it too. I would recommend just um, purchasing the Home Assistant Cloud. While we're waiting, we'll just uh, click on that. So we're here at the Home Assistant website. Look at all the different things you can do. Um, it tells you about everything. You click on the integrations here and it can show you all the integrations you can do. Nabucasa is um, the sponsor slash developer of Home Assistant. And they're also the ones that provide the remote access. So in order to get that remote access, you're going to have to create an account and log in to Nabucasa. 
and get things set up. They do have a 31 day free trial, which is nice. So let's click on their pricing. Monthly subscription is $6.50 a month or $65 a year. That's pretty cheap. I would recommend doing that. Like I said, there are other ways to remotely access your home assistant without paying for this. I'm not gonna show you those, but they're out there um, on the internet and YouTube nothing nefarious or illegal about them. I just believe in supporting these creators and helping them advance this community. So that's why I'm not gonna talk about them. So we're still rolling here. We'll see you in a second. For me, it's gonna be about 20 minutes. Actually, it's gonna be after lunch for me. Let's see what Home Assistant found. Honestly, that wasn't 20 minutes for me either. It was literally like two minutes. So now I can either click on this button here to create my smart home or I can restore from a backup. I'm also having individual backups of Home Assistant that I'm doing on top of doing a backup of the virtual machine. So, I've, so we're gonna go ahead and just click on create my smart home and we're gonna do the name. It's gonna create a username. You can leave it like that, password, and if they match, you can hit create account. And no, I am not in Amsterdam. As of this moment right now, this this is a static thing and there's no GPS connected to it, so it doesn't know where you're at. Now we are going to talk, especially in the case of, for RVers, um, how to set a GPS up on this. Um, so that it automatically update your location, which is very important for a lot of the automations and also for um, weather forecasting, which you can also do through Home Assistant. So for now, I am just going to choose, wants to know if you want to send any of this data to them for diagnostic use, so just click next. They found some compatible devices already, so we'll click finish there. And as you can see there, we already see our weather your name got some notifications down here on the left got new devices discovered uh, login attempt failed that does that occasionally when you're logging in for the first time i don't know why but it does so just dismiss that um, we'll dismiss this for now and so here we are we have home assistant set up now let's see click on settings the home assistant cloud that's what we talked about a minute ago with nabucasa to get your remote access so that's how you set that up there let's go into devices and services and see what it's found like you said it's found my printer and my hughes power watchdog do i have other things on there well yes i do as a matter of fact here is my actual running home assistant i've got a lot of stuff configured discovered whatever you want to call it here let's jump back to here and we can either configure these things or ignore it because they may find things you don't want to configure into your home assistant so you can just ignore it now what if it's not seeing something that's there i can click on add integration and i got a lot of stuff going on here i got a lot of stuff and that's just the A's. So I can pick anything I want or I can do a search. For you Apple folks, we can click on Apple, not Opal, Apple. And we can, if we have an iCloud account, we can add it, uh, Apple TV, Apple Weather Kit, the HomeKit Bridge, uh, HomeKit device, iTunes, etc. So you have a lot of choices here just for your Apple devices. Um, if you use um, Hughes lights, it, there's Philips right here. We got Hughes TV. If you're a fellow Tiffin owner and probably some other RVs as well, then you probably have a bunch of LG smart TVs in your RV. Well, I can click on LG. I can add smart tv I gotta turn it on and fill out the fields well, tv's off i don't have access to it the host is the host name or ip address for your television if you have devices that use the um, magic home or smart home to you connect t-u-y-a then you can add them here as well so there's a lot of things you can do and it's pretty easy to can get them configured so we're going to do that in just a second but let's take a quick peek at some other things here first. So the overview, we don't have anything. Let's jump into my actual Home Assistant instance so you can actually see what all this looks like. And I know there's some stuff here on the left side that you don't have, but you will. So here we are looking at my personal Home Assistant 
instance. You can see everything that I have installed. Now, I've been working on this for over a year now, adding things as I go. And I also had a big head start because my RV, which is a um, 2019 uh, Tiffin Open Road 34PA, has what's called a spider or firefly system installed. So a lot of this stuff um, runs off what's called an RV CAN bus or RV CAN. And I had a device called a Coach Proxy, which is a little Raspberry Pi with some software on it that can actually control all this stuff through a web page, you know, my phone or whatever. So I kind of had a head start there, but all that stuff isn't really necessary for what we're going to be doing. Let's take a quick peek at what we can do with any RV or home, regardless of how old it is, regardless of what, if any, technology is in it, and no need for internet access either. So some of the things on this screen, we're just going to ignore the 3D printer, unless you have a 3D printer and you can ask me questions about it and we can install it. The first thing is this outlet right here. This is a little, little plug called a peanut. That's literally the name of it. It's about that big around. And it plugs into the regular outlet and allows you to control it remotely. This power strip plugged in right behind me, which you can kind of see a little bit, and I don't have links to all this in the description below. That is controlled through, well, let's scroll down here. We'll look at this outlet one. If you listen real closely, you can hear it click off and on. And this particular one has three outlets which are controlled remotely. It has three that are always on and it has three USB connectors on the top. One's controlled um, remotely and the other two are just always on. Well, you said you had three control words. You have Coach Outlet 1 and Coach Outlet 2. That's true. I renamed the third outlet to this projector outlet. That's another video that's coming up real soon, or who knows, it may have already come out. So you'll have to check, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell for this channel so you'll go and look and see what videos are already out there. So the first thing that we're really going to see, and I'm going to scroll back up here to the dining room, is this LED strip. And I also have one here in the living room. I'm going to turn off the lights. Now it's dark in here. I'm gonna turn on the coach LED strip. I've got it turned down pretty low. So see it's at 14%. Let's crank it up. Let's change the color. Make it a red light, make it a green light. Go back down, I'm gonna turn the brightness back down. I'm gonna roll it back over here and I'm gonna turn it off. And then I'm gonna turn ceiling light back on. I can also do this. Echo, turn off the ceiling light. Echo, turn on the ceiling light. And yes, I'm using an Amazon device to do all that. And I know I said something about doing all this without using those devices. I haven't set that up just yet. We're gonna actually do that in a future video together. So that's just a, a quick overview of some of the things you can do. Relatively simple, plugging in this power strip here, which I think they're about 20 bucks on Amazon. There's gonna be a link in the description below to this specific one. Comes in two colors, black or white. It's got six total outlets and three USBs on it. Um, just by plugging that in, I have increased my outlets um, availability and I've also made it where I can control it remotely. So that was an easy fix. Any RV can do that. The LED strips, those were super cheap. If you've watched any of the videos I've done on undercarriage LED lights over on our Epic RV Adventure, you'll see that these are super cheap LEDs and they use um, Tuya or Tuya, however you want to pronounce it, T-U-Y-A devices. And they actually work on their own. They can work directly with Amazon or Google devices, but I have them tied into Home Assistant so I can control everything right here. So those are a couple of things you can do pretty easily. Like I said, it doesn't matter what type of RV you have. Now the thermostats, that's gonna be a problem if you don't already have um, thermostats that you can control remotely. There are some hacks out there for using like a Nest or some other program ones. I don't have any experience with those, so I'm not really gonna talk about those. But if you can get your thermostats to communicate with home assistants, it makes life a lot easier. Now this thing I got here outside, this has a lot of stuff that's pretty much all 
added on except for the awning stuff. The awning stuff that came with the basically came with the RV. So I got my neon strips, my undercarriage lights, my flag light. That's the well that turns the light on for my flag. So all these lights here actually have set up on a on a schedule where they will turn on at sundown and turn off. I have them set up turn off about an hour before sun up. They're on a timer, so they only run when they need to run. Down here is my Victron stuff. These are my couple of my camera views. This GPS data right here, we kind of mentioned that earlier. GPS data is actually coming from Victron. I purchased a cheap a USB GPS antenna, plugged it into the Raspberry Pi that was running the um, Venus OS software. And if we jump over to the right, these are showing the locations of the users I have. This is our vehicle. It does have Home Assistant client installed in that. Shelly, her location is unknown because I haven't set it up on her phone yet. And my location is, well, we're home. We're in the RV. If you don't like this view, because there's a lot of things, this is actually everything. You can create different views or different dashboards. Um, like I have one here, it's called RV. And it just has the stuff that I really need when I'm either getting ready to leave or we've just arrived at a campsite. I can click this button here and it shuts off all the lights for driving. Because I have a GPS on here now, I also have it set up where if the speed goes over, uh, I think 20 miles an hour is what I got it set to, it'll automatically shut off all the lights in here, uh, which is good. And it'll also keep the lights off if I'm driving at night because you know, I have lights that come on automatically at night. I don't want them to come on when we're going down the road. So I have a, an automation set up so they don't do that. This park RV is something I got set up. When I click on this, it turns on certain lights and certain other devices that I need whenever I first stop at a campsite. This is another easy view. This just kind of has it broken down by the different areas. So I can go into the living room again and I can kind of see everything that's in the living room. Um, it even shows my Echo Show, my Fire Sticks, things like that. And so that's the basic setting of Home Assistant. So now we've gone back into settings and devices. Some things I've added, automatic backup is a big deal. But as you can see, there's a lot of things to do. If you go back to the Home Assistant website, you can click on integrations at the top of the page and you can see all the different ones that are officially supported or you can just click on in the add integration button at the bottom right here. Quick note on the LED strips, make sure the ones you get are 12 volt. Now the underside lights I have, and I'm gonna do, be doing a new video on this because I have new underside lights, they're 24 volt. And we'll talk about that in that video, uh, why they're 24 volt instead of 12. But these are all 12 volt LED strips that I have and I have them pretty much on top of all of our slides. And I also have them behind the television right over here. So that's the TV accent light. So that's a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. And it's pretty easy to do. We're gonna talk specifically in a future video about connecting these to your devices. Um, in the meantime, if you already have them, our Magic Home devices, and you're struggling to get them to working, especially with Home Assistant, do what I did. Start doing Google searches and YouTube searches and finding videos on how to do that. They're all pretty easy to set up. So, so far, we really haven't done anything that's overly complicated except for the router piece. And again, that's not necessary for this. All you need for this is Home Assistant. And if you want to make it even easier, you can just install Home Assistant on a computer, whether that be a Raspberry Pi or that single board computer and not mess with Proxmox at all. You can actually run all of this stuff and do all the stuff I'm, I'm talking about with just running Home Assistant. I'm doing it a little bit more complicated simply because it provides a, a lot more stability and a lot more reliability to the overall system. But if you're not comfortable going through all that, then by all means, just install Home Assistant on a computer and it can be any computer you have laying around obviously the more powerful that computer is the better but it can be pretty much any computer made in the last five or six years so it doesn't have to be a brand new super duper computer so i want to thank you guys so much for watching this video again hit that subscribe button give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it got any questions Drop them in the comments below and I'll get them answered. And we're going to go ahead and make our smart home, RV, shed, whatever in the coming weeks. So stay tuned and stick around.